Okay, let's start our lecture today. Um, in previous lecture, we have learned um, the separation of variables. It's a very useful method. Um, when you have several, uh, let's say variables, usually um, in space, we have three variables, X, Y, Z. Um, if you have a partial differential equation, or x, y, and v for those three variables. Um, if there's a way you can convert it or you can separate the variables in let's say several functions, then it may make your um, calculations much easier. You can convert a partial differential equation into an ordinary uh, differential equation, then solving the equation becomes much easier. So in previous lecture, uh, we used uh, one or two examples <clears throat> to demonstrate how to separate uh, X and Y because we set a Z to be infinite, uh, let's say infinite along uh, system. So Z is uh, independent. So we, we had only X and Y those two variables and we tried to solve the Laplace equations by separate X and Y into uh, two different equations. So if you remember uh, what we have done is, when you have um, a function, let's say um, V, with V is function of X and Y. We're trying to find a function, which is a product of two functions. Let's say X, which is a function of X times Y, which is a function of Y. <coughs> then the partial differential equation becomes um, differential, ordinary differential equations, and then you can solve X and Y, and then uh, the product of X and Y will be your V. That's what we have learned in previous class, if you remember, before the spring break. Um, but that's the basic uh, method of separation of variables because we use X, Y, Z, which is Cartesian coordinates. Uh, in the previous examples, we use condition coordinates to um, do the um, separation of variables. And um, uh, we use that x, y as our variables because our boundaries are planes. Um, and for condition um, systems, the derivation and the equations are uh, easier compared to other coordinates. But sometimes other coordinates has to be used. For example, spherical coordinates. For spherical system like a sphere or hollow sphere or something in your uh, calculations in the real problems, using spherical coordinates is the easiest way. If you try to use Cartesian coordinates, the calculation might be even more complicated. So how to uh, use the uh, separation of variable methods in spherical coordinates, that's, uh, that's the thing we want to discuss in, in this lecture. So before this lecture, I assume you're very familiar with first Laplace equations as we did in previous lectures. So solving Laplace equation is a basic um, for this lecture. And I assume you're very familiar with spherical coordinates and with uh, the solutions of basic um, spherical coordinates, um, differential equations. Now let's take a look at in the spherical system, the Laplace equation could be written in uh, this term. So if you remember in uh, Cartesian coordinates, it's a 
partial v, a partial squared v over partial squared x. But uh, here in coordinates, in, in spherical coordinates, we don't have x, y, z. Now what we have is the r, theta, and the phi. Do you still remember what is r, theta, phi in, co in, in spherical coordinates? Let's say in the spherical coordinates, you first need r to describe um, the distance between your, um, uh, let's say, your coordinates and your origin. And then you need a theta. You define a plane and the angle between r and the, your plane will be theta. And then, a, a, let's say, a phi. Phi is another angle. It's difficult to draw, but uh, <coughs> it's another angle between your uh, R and um, um, the rotation in Z axis. So the first rotation is in, let's say, um, X axis, they rotated in this direction. And the second one is in Z direction, they rotated in, in in this direction. So uh, let's assume um, a, the, the system or the problem we're solving has the uh, as the mutual symmetry, which means it's independent uh, from, let's say, from phi. So it's a similar to our previous um examples in Cartesian coordinates. In Cartesian coordinates, if you remember correctly, we have a wall here, and then we have another wall at the bottom. We have another wall on the top. However, uh, we extend one direction. Let's say this is if this is y direction, we extend the y direction to be infinitely long. So that uh, your V is independent from Y direction so that you, you have only two coordinates, X and V. If this is X direction and this is a Z direction. So by creating such a system, you will have only two uh, variables, X and Z. So that's in our previous Cartesian uh, problem. But in um, spherical coordinates, we can also create a symmetry um, with phi angle. So let's say um, the system is symmetry in phi direction. So it's independent from phi direction. So um, the equation could be written without the term of phi. So what do you have? Um, will be shown here. <coughs> and um, as before, in previous lecture, we described, let's say, the V as a product of two um, functions, X and Y. So similarly, in this example, now we have two variables, R and theta. Let's describe the entire function to be product of r and theta. And then similarly, um, we uh, substitute v by the product of r and theta. You will have partially r times theta over partial r. However, uh, what you can do is uh, you can divide the equation by v. Again, this is similar to our previous x, y coordinates in the Cartesian coordinates. You substitute v by r and theta by the product of r and theta, and then divide um, the equation by v, what you get from here to here is shown um, in, in this equation. So it's a very similar to our previous uh, lecture when we introduced 
Cartesian system. Um, so if we look at the left term, now there is no theta at all. It's uh, r dr over dr. So it's a function of capital. It's the, the, the function of capital R is a function of uh, small r. So the complicated, uh, let's say, partial differential equation, which is shown here, becomes ordinary uh, differential equation here and here. So it's a two, um, let's say it's two terms or two ordinary differential equations. If you know this term plus this term equals zero and uh, R and theta zero independent from each other. So no matter what values you choose for theta, um, your left term plus right term should always be zero or a constant. So how can we um, make sure that two terms which are independent from each other to be a constant? The only way is they have both be, they have to be both constant. So this is a constant A, let's say, this is constant B. No matter uh, what happens to the function of theta, you always have, oh, can you still hear me? Yes. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, okay. So there's something, I think there's something wrong with my uh, headphone. Okay. So um, the only way to make two um, independent function um, in this form is a uh, is the, the function a and function b. They have to be both constant, and the sum of those constants should be zero. Only in this way, no matter what you, uh, no matter what values you have for theta, it doesn't. Uh, affect the, the sum because this term is always B and this term is always A. And A and B, the sum of A and B should be zero. Therefore, what we can do is, uh, let's define this, let's define this term to be a constant A and this term to be a constant B or negative A because the sum should be zero. Therefore, uh, the left term becomes A and right term becomes negative A. We can define it as A and negative A. However, there's a better way or fancy way to define A. We define A to be L times L plus one. And we define negative A to be negative L times L plus one. Why do we define A to be a compli complicated um, <clears throat> equation in this way because because if you define them in this way it will be uh, more convenient to get solutions for this equation and that equation so first of all let's see uh, this term <clears throat> um, this is an ordinary differential equation um, I think we have learned this equation in mathematical method or your, your previous um, physics courses. In, <coughs> in spherical coordinates um, or for any um, coordinates, if you have a um, uh, ordinary differential equation in this way, the general solution is r equals to this term. Have you learned this equation before? Yes. Okay, great. Then we don't need to explain more. Um, if you forget, how did you derive this equation and get the solution in this way, please go, <coughs> go back to review your previous lectures. I believe in uh, mathematical method, you have learned such things. And here, 
uh, this is the easy solution for R. It should be A times R to power L plus B over R to power L plus one. So L should be uh, integers. It should be non-negative integers. And then <coughs> let's see the other term. For this term, if we define it in this way, then the solution is a laundry polynomial, which, which means um, theta equals to P L cosine theta. Um, so what is PL? PL is complicated term. It's defined by Roger Gay's uh, formula, which is shown here. One over two to the power L times the factor of L, then times um, L uh, derivative of this term. And this term is just X squared times the ones power of L. So it's a very complicated term, but what you can do is uh, if you take just non-negative integers into L, you can get each term. For example, when L equals to zero, the whole term becomes a one. And when L equals to one, the entire term becomes X. Here shows uh, px when l equals two, three, four, five. You can derive even more terms. <clears throat> okay, then by now we have successfully separated this v, um, which is a function of r and theta, into um, a product of two functions, which is r and theta. And each of the r and the theta is only a, a a function of one or individual uh, uh, parameters or variables. <coughs> okay, now you actually, uh, once we get here, we, we have already separated um, the variables and we already get the solution. And now let's notice that uh, PLX is the else order polynomial. And in the previous table, you have saw, you have seen several terms. And of course, you can uh, take those terms into, uh, into calculations and plug in numbers, you will get uh, some real numbers. For example, let's say, uh, if you plug in one here, <coughs> you always get one. Uh, if you plug into some other numbers um, and some L, you'll get different terms. And this formula works only for non-negative integer values of L and it provides only one solution but our equation is <coughs> secondary, second order. It should process two independent solutions for every value of L. So it turns out that the other solution below blow up at theta equals to zero or theta equals to pi. And therefore unacceptable on physical grounds, for, for example, the second solution for L equals to zero is shown here. So uh, therefore we can check, um, we can check, check if the solution satisfy the equation uh, shown, shown here. <clears throat> so in the case of as the muso symmetry, the most general separation solution to Lovelace equation consistent with minimal physical requirement is um, just this solution. We have demonstrated the two terms um, to be here 
let's say 3.59 and here. So if you combine them together, your V will be a product of both of them. Then you can write the solution here. And this is just uh, a one solution or one term when L equals to some int non-negative integer. Um, based on the uh, linear, um, let's say superposition linear features, you can sum all of the uh, solutions together when L equals different numbers. And of course, L should be non-negative numbers. And the sum of, of this term is still the solution of your uh, original function. Dr. Lee, can you hear us? Okay. 